Picture a very young boy who lost his mother, whom he had a very close connection with at a very early age. This boy also lost his brother, moved from Kentucky to Indiana and Illinois, and this young boy also had a poor relationship with his own father and worked on the farm almost his whole childhood. This boy turned out to be one of your most successful presidents of all time, your 16th president, me, Abraham Lincoln. Even though I had a very complicated childhood, I forgot about the past and I focused on the future, and I ended up becoming one of the most successful presidents of all time. I was one of the wisest and smartest presidents of my time. I had a very complicated and sad childhood. I was born on February 12, 1809 at Sinking Springs Farm near Hodgeville, Kentucky. I often moved all around Illinois, not only as a child, but as an adult, too. Our family eventually developed problems. I lost my mother, whom I was very close to, at an early age. As a result, this caused my father, Thomas Lincoln, to have a very, very hard time. Not only that, but my younger brother, Thomas Lincoln Jr., died at infancy. Thomas Lincoln, Abraham, my father, was born on January 6, 1773. Did you know that he almost got captured by Indians? Thomas died at the age of 73 on January 17, 1851. I did not attend his funeral. Nancy Hanks Lincoln was my, fa my mother. She was born on February 5, 1784. We had a very close connection. She died at the age of 34 due to milk sickness on October 5, 1818. Sarah Lincoln was my sister. She was born in 1807 and she died at the age of 21 in 1828. We were not close. Thomas Lincoln Jr. was born in 1812, but sadly died soon after as an infant. If all the years were added up, I would have had only less than a year of formal schooling in Kentucky and Indiana. I taught myself how to read and write. My family only owned one book, and that was a Bible that I read each and every day. I had three different jobs, and I started a family before presidency. My first job was a farmer. I started farming at a very early age, and most of my life I farmed with my father. Eventually, I did not have time to work on the farm, and shortly after I realized this, I strongly disagreed with my father, and I quit working on the farm. My next job was a store clerk. At the age of 22 years old, I became a store clerk in New Salem, Illinois, at a small grocery store in 1831. Later, the business failed, and I lost my job. Soon after that, I bought a general store with my good friend, William F. Berry. But again, a few months later, that business failed also. Five years later, in September of 1836, I got my license to practice law. Abe, my friend, John T. Stewart, invited me, slash introduced me to it. And that is why I did it. I was interested in politics from then on. I married Mary Todd Lincoln in December of 1840. I was born on December 13, 1818. I am nine years younger than Abraham. Together, we had four children, Robert Todd, Edward Baker, William Wallace, and Thomas. Our first child was Robert Todd. Robert was born in 1843 and died in 1926. He happened to live longer than any of his other siblings. He died at the age of 83. Mary Todd and I had our next child, Edward Baker whom we called Eddie Baker. He was born in 1846, but died only four years later in 1850. About the time of Edward's death was when we became very depressed. We had our next son, who was William Wallace, whom we called Willie. Willie was born in 1850, but died 12 years later in 1862. He was the first child of any president to die in the White House. We had our last son, Thomas, whom we called Tad. He was born in 1853 and died 18 years later. He was studying at college when he heard the announcement of my death. I had some failures, but I also had some successes during presidency. When it was around my campaign slash election time, it was a perfect time because of the argument over slavery. I often lost to smaller campaigns in New Salem as a lawyer, but when it was election time, it was a landslide. I was nominated 16th president on November 6, 1860 by Republicans. Four years later, I was elected to my second term on November 8, 1864. Both of these elections were landslides. One year after being elected to my first term, I inaugurated as the 16th president on March 4, 1861. The parade filled the streets. Our life in the White House was pretty basic. But... Both of us suffered from depression. 
Mary pretty much never got any time to spend with me. However, she had permission to barge in on me whenever she wanted to, and she got to discuss whatever she wanted to discuss. Our kids were spoiled. They were allowed to do whatever they wanted, whenever they wanted to. The kids enjoyed playing jokes, pranks, and jokes and pranks on me, Mary, and the White House staff. Some of my accomplishments are, in 1863, I issued the Emancipa Emancipation Proclamation, and I also delivered the Gettysburg Address. In 1864, I was elected to my second term as president, and I also recommended the 13th Amendment to Congress. Finally, in 1865, I inaugurated to my second term, and I also avoided getting kidnapped by John Wilkes Booth by not attending the soldier's home where Booth had planned my death, or my kidnapping. Although I had many successes like any other president, I also had some failures. I was defeated and run for Illinois State Senate multiple times. Also, in 1856, I was defeated and run for vice president. Finally, in 1838, I was defeated and run for Illinois House of Speaker. I had a very sad death as I was also the first president to be assassinated. I also have many interesting facts about my life. I was shot by John Wilkes Booth on Good Friday at Ford's Theater on Friday, April 14, 1865. After Booth shot me, he ran on stage, got on, and shouted something that sounded like, Sink Semper Trinus, the South is avenged. After that, he ran. Armies were sent to go find him, and he was actually found ten days later hiding in a barn in Virginia. Nobody really knew how he died, but people have settled on two theories, that either he shot himself or the barn that he was hiding in caught on fire and he died in the fire. John Wilkes Booth had many different ideas on ways to kill me. I actually received a death threat from him just weeks before he striked, but I didn't care or pay any attention. Booth planned on my death exactly six weeks before he shot me. John Wilkes Booth wanted to kill Ulysses S. Grant the exact same day he shot me. Many people believed that I died instantly. However, I suffered, suffered through the night, and I died the next morning. I had gray eyes, gray slash dark brown hair, high cheekbones, a high-pitched voice, and I was said to be honest and have a good sense of humor. I weighed one, about 180 pounds, and my left eye was slightly higher, higher than my right, and I have a scar on my face above my left eye due to a gang of thieves. And I was the tallest president at 6'4". I was said to keep important papers in my top hat, and I didn't spend much time with my family because of work. Love to work. And I established Thanksgiving as a national holiday. And lastly, I was the first president to use a telegraph. As we can see, I have been one of your best presidents of the United States of America that you've ever had, and one of your most popular presidents of the United States of America.